The release of DeepSeek R1 has recently made waves in the AI world. Specifically, it showed how powerful reinforcement learning can be in boosting the reasoning abilities of large language models. But when it comes to coding tasks, DeepSeek R1 mainly focuses on competitive programming, where every problem is self-contained and you can easily run the code to check if the solution works. That makes it easy to measure success by simply executing the code. In the real world though, like fixing a bug in a complex back-end service, it's not always that simple. Running the code might need a dedicated environment, and even if you can execute it, figuring out if the solution is actually correct can be much trickier. This is why models like DeepSeek R1 still struggle when it comes to real-world software engineering. Today, we're reviewing a new paper from Meta, which is a natural follow-up to DeepSeek R1. The paper is titled SWERL Advancing LLM Reasoning via Reinforcement Learning on Open Software Evolution. This paper proposes a way to scale reinforcement learning for real-world software engineering by training models on how open source software evolves over time. To train the model, the researchers curated a dataset of pull requests from GitHub. We can learn about the curation pipeline using the following figure from the paper. The source of the data is GitHub Archive, a project that tracks all public activity on GitHub. So, rather than just code, it also provides issues, comments, pull requests, and more. Then, to obtain the source code, the researchers cloned the repositories. This way, we get the commit history for each repository, rather than a code snapshot. This process was done for 4.6 million repositories. An important note is that all repositories used by the SWE Bench benchmark are excluded, since this is the benchmark used to analyze the model performance, as we'll see soon. The gathered data so far is not structured for training. In the next step, the purpose is to aggregate all relevant information for each pull request to have self-contained pull request data for training. All pull requests that were not eventually merged are filtered out. For each pull request that is kept, we aggregate all of its relevant data. Specifically, the description of the issue associated with the pull request, comments, and the content of the edited files before the change. We take the final merged changes to serve as a reference solution. The next step adds related files that are related to the pull request but are not changed as part of it. The researchers discovered that just feeding the model only with the files that are edited is causing the model to develop a bias where it will generate edits to all of its input files. This is undesirable of course since in practice some files are relevant to the code change but do not require a change themselves. The researchers use LAMA 3.170b instruct to predict which files are related, given the pull request description and the parts of the edited files. Finally, not all GitHub pull requests are of high quality. Some, for example, are generated by bots, and others include just a version bump. Therefore, the researchers employed various filtering rules to remain with a dataset of approximately 11 million high quality pull requests. Let's now move on to understand the training process using the following figure from the paper. First, we already covered the data curation step, where the researchers built a large pull request dataset. From this dataset, we select a subset of high-quality samples to create what they call the seed dataset for reinforcement learning. Each selected sample should have at least one linked GitHub issue, where the issue should describe a bug-fixing request and the code changes should involve programming files. Then, each sample is fed into the LLM after being converted into a consistent input prompt format. In another figure from the paper, we can see the prompt template. It starts with a system instruction that tells the model to output its reasoning process wrapped within think tags, followed by its proposed solution wrapped within solution tags. This part is used for all samples, and for each sample, the prompt body includes the GitHub issue description and the relevant code context extracted during data curation. Going back to the training process, given such prompt, we sample multiple outputs from the model. The top one represents a valid solution, and the bottom one represents a solution in invalid format, and in practice there are more than two sampled solutions. Next, we calculate a reward for each of the outputs. Traditionally, a reward model is used to calculate the reward, but in this case, we use rule-based reinforcement learning Similarly to DeepSeek R1 approach, the rule is different than DeepSeek R1 though. For outputs with illegal format, the reward is minus 1. For valid format outputs, the reward is determined using a similarity score between the predicted patch, the code changes that model generated, to the Oracle patch, 
which is the final real merge changes for the pull request. This provides a value between 0 to 1. Some limitation for this reward calculation is that it may prevent the model from exploring alternative solution approaches than the one used in the original pull request. The reinforcement learning algorithm used is GRPO, short for Group Relative Policy Optimization, same as with DeepSeq R1. Given a group of outputs, this algorithm steers the model towards the response with the highest reward. The model trained with this approach is called LAMA3 SWERL. Applying this reinforcement learning training process confirms the aha moment discovered by DeepSeq R1, but this time in the context of real world software engineering tasks. We can see an example of this on the left of the following figure. Given a problem, the model learns to allocate more thinking time to reflect on its initial assumptions during the reasoning process. This isn't something the researchers explicitly programmed. It's an emergent behavior that arises naturally through reinforcement learning. Surprisingly, the researchers identified additional aha moments where the model developed general reasoning abilities that transfer to out-of-domain tasks, even though these tasks were not included in the reinforcement learning dataset. One example is a simple function implementation task where the model shows a behavior of exploring alternatives for the solution. Another example is a math question where the model demonstrates a divide and conquer strategy, breaking the problem into smaller pieces and solving each part step by step to compute the final result. Let's now review the main results shown in the following table from the paper. This table presents the PASS1 results on SWE Bench Verified, a human verified collection of high quality GitHub issues. This benchmark is specifically designed to evaluate how well models can fix real world software issues. The table is divided into two sections. The upper section lists closed source models or models with more than 100 billion parameters. The lower section focuses on open source models with fewer than 100 billion parameters. LAMA3 SWERL70B achieves a pass one score of 41%, meaning it solves 41% of the issues correctly on the first try. This sets a new state of the art for models under 100 billion parameters. This result is not as good as the results of some of the closed source models or the larger open source models. However, this model is open source and of a much more friendly size. Another interesting result from the table compares reinforcement learning with supervised fine tuning. In the following table, we can see the performance on multiple out of domain tasks for the base model on the left a model that was trained on the pull request data using supervised fine-tuning in the middle and the reinforcement learning model on the right. The results show that the reinforcement learning model consistently outperforms both the base model and the supervised fine-tuning model, even on tasks that were never part of the reinforcement learning training data. This reinforces the idea that reinforcement learning unlocks general reasoning skills rather than just memorizing the training examples. If you found this content valuable, please subscribe and hit the like button to support the channel. We also send one minute read summaries by mail about the papers we review here. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more reviews of AI papers.